I cannot wait to welcome John Edwards, who's joining us in from Texas, who is a veteran running a family-operated adventure called Easter Pup Creations. John, welcome, and thank you for being with us. Oh, thank you for having me, Monet and Bishop. Hey, John. Of course. So, John, as I mentioned, I know what your ministry is all about, and it is such a beautiful thing to see how you're growing uh, the ministry and all the good work you're doing. But even the name, Easter Pup Creations, can you explain a little bit of the background of how you chose that name, uh, just so people who are watching can get a better sense of it? Well, I like to tell people that as new creations in Christ, we're like young pups, and Easter celebrates the uh, resurrection of our Lord. But honestly, uh, it goes back to at the time I started the business, I had this uh, husky, Ala uh, Alaskan Shepherd is a husky shepherd mix with a bad attitude. And she was my unofficial service dog. And the two of us were so close. And her being born on Easter Sunday, her nickname was the Easter Pub. Mm -hmm. So when we decided to form the business, I named it after her. Oh, that's wonderful. I get it now. <laughs> Thank you, John, for that <laughs> clarification. Because I was wondering, I would have asked you the same question. Now, uh, here at Catholic TV, the rosary uh, is a big part of every day. We pray it three times a day, every day. And uh, for me personally, uh, I pray the rosary every day. So how about you? What does the rosary mean to you? And why should others be invited to pray it every day? The rosary is one of the few things that will bring me peace in dark times. Mm -hmm. It comforts me. It gives me strength and guides me. But unlike a lot of people who were born and raised Catholic, grew up in the Catholic Church, and then discover the rosary and the beauty and power of it, I did things backwards. It was the rosary that led me to the Catholic Church. Yeah. And I was first introduced to it when I was in the Army, and a uh, wonderful nurse I worked with, older Mexican lady. Every day I'd come into the trauma room, she'd go, oh, me, I pray to St. Jude for you every day. I realized later it wasn't quite the compliment I thought. But I got introduced to the rosary, and years later, uh, when I was going through a dark time, I was suffering PTSD from my time, working EMS and rescue prior to the Army, and then in the Army, I was trauma and pediatric trauma. And as years later started affecting me, I discovered the rosary would bring me peace. Uh, a lot of it culminated in 2005. I was working in a machine shop making a drilling stem when the chain on my machine snapped. Thank God I threw my hand up like this at the last minute. The chain hit my hand, crushed my hand, and took off two of my fingers. Been through a number of surgeries, hands been reconstructed. And I went to a really dark place. My family even didn't even know what to do with me. It took about a year to learn to do basic things with my hand. And about a year later, I remember telling my wife, I'm supposed to make the rosary. She thought I'd lost my mind. But I just started making them, and by making them and praying them, I started finding a piece I hadn't known before. Hmm. It just started me on my journey, leading me to the church and diving deeper into the rosary. But more importantly, I found the real power and beauty behind it. Wonderful. That's a beautiful story, John. And even, you know, the process of making the rosary beads, of course, we have one here. Where do you draw the inspiration of, you know, the patron saint that's going to be based off of the rosaries that you're making? Or what's the process of even making these rosary beads like for you? A lot of times I'll, I guess I'm inspired by different saints or I'll see a centerpiece. Sometimes it's beads and I'll see different beads and color combinations. I'll think, you know what, that reminds me of this saint or that <laughs> saint. A prime example of the world's where I've been carrying in my pocket, normally I always carry a Padre Pio rosary. Uh, here recently I started carrying this, I don't know if you can see it. It's a uh, St. Maria Goretti that I made. And that inspiration came from back, it was on All Hallows' Eve, uh, Father Chris Martins came to my parish with his uh, Relics of the Church, Church of the Church exhibit, where he explained the meanings of relics, the power of relics in our faith, but also told the story of Maria Goretti. And I'd heard of her, but I didn't know a lot about her. And him telling her story and the power of forgiveness, I just felt like someone reached to my chest, grabbed my heart, just almost ripped it out. And then afterwards, you get to go and experience over 150 relics, plus the true uh, relic of the true cross, Mary's veil, uh, the crown of thorns. And it was such an overwhelming, power, powerful experience for me. And that kind of started me on the path of like, hmm, I need to learn more about St. Maria, which led me to making a Maria Goretti rosary. 
Hey, John, by the way, I was ordained a priest on the feast of St. Maria Goretti. Just, just <laughs> throwing that in, a little, you know, background well, info. <laughs> hey, uh, I'm a Knight of Columbus, fourth degree. I understand you are, too. You have a heart for giving back. How does your uh, ability to, uh, desire to give back to other people, how does it show forth in your work with the Knights? Uh, with the Knights, there's just so many opportunities to reach out and help the community. Uh, I became a Knight... 2021 and being around such amazing gentlemen uh the leadership the mentorship diving in and seeing so many ways not only can i help my parish but help our community a uh, prime example uh this past november i was chairperson of the our uh, 10th annual chili cook off which benefits the american wheelchair mission uh chris sir Knight chris lewis uh, the son of jerry lewis is the president of that organization he came out, spent the day with us, got to hear stories and about, especially about how these wheelchairs benefit people all around the globe. One of the things they always say is one wheelchair actually benefits at least 10 people with the people in need. Uh, through that chili cook-off, we were able to raise the funds for 160 wheelchairs. Wow. So that was one example of just by being around the nights and the example these amazing men have set for me, the mentorship and leadership. You can't help but want to dive in, whether, like we're talking Catholic School Week, we have in my parish a, a elementary and junior high school, so a lot of the nights we're quite active trying to help out our school. That's wonderful. And John, we also want to make sure we say hello to all those nights who are watching right now in support of you, but to just close out our time, if someone wants to get their very own custom-made rosary bead or the rosary beads that you are making, where can people go to purchase theirs today? Uh, they can either go to my website, easterpupcreations.com, uh, email me, there's a link there, or they on social media, it's Easter Pup Creations on both Instagram and Facebook. And I always tell people, take a look at what I have, and kind of like I did with you, it's like, okay, uh, can you do a different thing? I'd love to do custom work and work with you to find out what we just the right road for just for you. Great. John, these rosaries, they're, they're beautiful, they're sturdy, they make you want to pray. So thank you so much for uh, uh, giving, giving this beautiful rosary to Monet and uh, being open to create them for our viewers. Uh, thank you so much, John Edwards, founder of Easter Pup Creations. Easterpupcreations.com is the website if you want to get a rosary. John, thank you, and may God always bless you. Thank you, John. Thank you for having me.